My name is Sunday Gardner and welcome to Facebook Ad Strategy Volume 1. This is one of three classes that we are doing this month to introduce you to Facebook advertising. So the big question would be who is this for? So I always like to set the stage to make sure that you are in the right space and if you are a travel business owner and you are frustrated that you are not able to get as many new leads into your travel business, you don't have a consistent uh, stream of either customers or revenue, this class is going to be for you. If you have tried Facebook ads in the past and you feel like you failed miserably or you just think Facebook advertising doesn't work, this class is for you. And then if you know that you want to expand your reach beyond who you can physically touch, meaning who you meet on the street and who you hand out your business card and you want a way to um, get access to volume of people, and I mean volume of people that meet your criteria of your ideal client, then this class is for you. So today we're gonna to talk about um, why your current efforts, if you're using Facebook ads, may not be successful and how you can make the shift to doing Facebook ads successfully and what the formula that I use, not only for my own advertising, but for the clients that I teach Facebook ads to, we'll talk about what that formula looks like and how you can start to get success in your ads. But before I get started, some of you may be new to me. I do see some new names that I'm not familiar with. I just want to give you just a bit of an introduction of who I am. I've been, um, an, I've been an entrepreneur since 2006, officially. So we opened our first physical location in 2006. It was, um, and we saw it still are in business. We have a barber shop in downtown Frisco. And um, I subsequently have opened and closed a, a beauty salon. Um, but really the, the crux of my experience is about 15 years plus in managing and helping business owners like yourself launch new products and services and actually launch businesses. So my background is in launching businesses and then also the services that support those businesses. I've been a travel business owner for about three years. I'm a certified project manager, so that means that I am licensed to help you manage the launch of any of your projects, either be your business or your marketing campaigns, whatever projects that you have. I'm the best gal to help you get her done. I always like to start my trainings off with what my promise is to you because I do recognize that your time is valuable and so I never want to waste anyone's time. But really today we are focused on Facebook advertising and I want to promise you that it is not, let me rephrase that, it does not have to be hard and frustrating. And if you've ever tried to get in the back office and you don't know about Facebook ads, you probably have decided that it's hard and it's too frustrating. There's too many things to click on. You don't know where to go or what to do, but we're going to start to peel back that onion in today's class so that you can understand how you can use Facebook ads to get more visible in your business, get more engagement, and ultimately make more money in your business using Facebook advertising. All right, the things that I really wanna make sure that we go over for you today is understanding why you need to be marketing your business and what it means to have marketing goals in your business. We'll talk about why Facebook advertising is my choice platform for getting that volume and getting in front of volume people. We're also going to talk about some specific ad strategies that you can use to hit the goals that you want for your travel business. I'm going to talk about some success stories and then we're going to talk about how we can make it work for your business. So I always, I always, if you've attended any of my training, you always know, I always start with goals. Like what are your goals? And for most of you, it's to make more money, right? It's to make more money in your travel business. So you can either service more people, you can get the freedom that you're looking for in your business, either in time or money. You probably want to have higher paying clients with less stress, right? So you don't want the tire kickers who are just looking for quotes and don't want to actually book with you. You want to probably spend less time working and have more freedom to go on vacation or travel. 
Um, what I love is, you know, as I continue to support the travel industry in my timeline are so many travel professionals who are actually living the dream, um, which is to travel, right? So I get the opportunity to see so many of you doing the very thing that so many of you want to do, which is to travel yourself. And so you may need to be able to position your business such that you can make more money so that you can travel or that you have more time so that you can travel. So again, one of the major objectives at the end is, is that we wanna spend less money and make more money and how do we do that in our travel business? So let's figure out how we can do that through Facebook ads. So I always like to set, set the stage with making sure that you understand the different stages of the customer that you're working with. There are three stages that every customer that you work with will go um, into. And I like to equate them to just general relationships, right? So people that don't know you, don't know anything about your travel business, don't know you as a travel owner, don't know anything. Obviously they're strangers, right? And so what we wanna make sure is, is that we know when we get ready to start doing an ad, who we're trying to market to. Are we trying to market to people who don't know us are we marketing to people who are familiar with us, acquaintances, or are we marketing to our BF, BFF clients, right? Clients who know all about us, who are in love with us. They've you know, either booked with you in the past and you've got some new offer that you wanna share with them. It's very important that you know before you start advertising who it is that you're advertising to and where they are in the stage. So many of you have seen this, for those who have not, let me just go through this a little bit. Strangers, again, are people that don't know you. The types of offers that you wanna give them are low commitment, um, high value, low commitment type of offers. So reading a blog post, watching a short video, an ebook, a template, a guide, a podcast, these are great low offers that you want to have and make available to strangers, right? The goal for you is to introduce your travel business to them. You want to extend one of these sort of low commitment offers. And in exchange, you want to be able to get that valuable piece of information from them, which is their contact information. So if you market through email, you want to get their email address. If you actually call your um, new leads, you want to get their phone number, whatever that contact information that's important for you to be able to start the relationship, you want to be able to get that in this first stage. The KLT, for those who don't know, stands for no like and trust. It's low. They don't know you. They don't, you know, they don't have an opinion probably on liking you and they certainly don't trust you because you haven't built that relationship with them. Their, your brand awareness is very low. Their willingness to pay you directly is probably low to zero because they know nothing about you. In this stage, your goal should not be to try and sell them high ticket travel packages. Your goal in this stage is to introduce yourself to them, introduce your travel business, and introduce you as the business owner and how you are going to help their lives be better. No hard sales in this stage. The second stage is the acquaintance stage. This is where you may have been referred to someone in the past. They may have um, found you through a referral. They may have seen your ads in the past. They're maybe inside of your group. Maybe they're, um, they're, they've liked your business page. However, they may not have actually purchased from you yet and they are just getting to know you. And so in this phase, some of the offers that are really great to do are information webinars. You can give them an FAQ. You can demonstrate through social proof that you know your stuff, that you've done it before, um, testimonials, giving them a trial offer. And you know, for a travel business, many people will say, well, what's a trial offer? There are some travel agencies that actually have a trial um, they have memberships where you can become a member of their agency and you get a certain number of research, uh, research, maybe you plan their whole year and they pay a fee to be a part of that. You are okay to do soft selling and low entry offers here. So low entry can be in terms of time or money, right? But again, you do not want to be trying to sell your high dollar thousand, multiple thousand dollar packages to acquaintances unless they are a referral and they've got that 
higher no like and trust. So in this stage, your KLT is medium to high, it's growing, the relationship is growing, people are beginning to know who you are, the brand awareness is there, they are familiar with your name, they're familiar with you as the owner, and their willingness to pay is, has increased. Now, you know, I don't have to spend much time going over BFFs because that is really where we want most of our customers. We want our customers who are familiar with who you are. Right? They know your travel business, they know the quality of service that you're going to provide, and every time that you do something and it's something that they're interested in, they're ready to open up their checkbook, get their credit card, and swipe because they know that you're going to put together a great deal for them with a great experience and that there's no question in their mind. KLT is high here, brand awareness is high, and the willingness to pay is high. So this is the level of customer that you want to introduce your packages to. Before I go on, I want to make sure there are no questions about customer stages. Does anyone have any questions or um, any comments? If not, I'll move on. All right, so this is my ARC system. Um, the ARC system stands for Attract, Relate, and Convert. And so it's a simple system in terms of how you move a stranger down into a buying client, right? So the first step is, is that you wanna be able to have a process in place where you can consistently attract qualified leads. And so for those who are not familiar with the word lead or attract, what you wanna be able to do is, is when you hand out, let's, let me use a physical example. When you meet somebody and you start talking to them about your travel business, you may not know if they are interested in what type of travel. You may not know um, if they are willing to travel, right? You've got to discover that through conversation, right? But your attraction system, an automated attraction system, will automatically discover that based on the types of offers that you give people and they're clicking, if they're qualified, right? So if you do a blog, let's say on, you know, the five top destinations um, to go to or resorts to go to in Hawaii, right? People that click on that have qualified themselves because they're interested in Hawaii, they're interested in the resorts associated with Hawaii, and they're good to go. Please turn that down, Omar. Relationship is the number, uh, is R, so sorry about that. My kid's got the music, he's jamming in the background. Um, relationship is the R, and so what you want to do is once you've attracted somebody, right, you want to continue the relationship. You don't want to um, get their email address and never talk to them, right, because that relationship will quickly become old. When you meet a new friend, you want to, like, have a conversation, maybe go out to coffee, get to know them a little bit better, and that's what the R in the ARC system is. It's about you nurturing the relationship, continuing to ensure that you've reached out to them, you're offering them value, continuing to, so to speak, have that cup of coffee with them and provide value and let them know how your services can benefit them based on what their needs are. And then, you know, unfortunately, many of you have probably spent some time trying to build up your email list. Maybe you've sent out some emails, but you haven't asked for the sale. And so I always say, if you're in business for profit, right, your objective is to convert. And if you're not asking for the sale, then you're just simply, you know, in a hobby, just meeting people, right? And your objective is to meet, relate, and convert. So you always want to make sure that you've got processes in place, that you're solving problems, and that you're asking for the sale as it relates to that. So don't be afraid to ask for the sale. This is what you do and this is why you're in business. So really, I wanna just kinda you know, look to the bottom part and remember, remind you that marketing is simply finding your customer so that you can make the right offer to them with the right message so they can buy. Simple as that, right? So we talk about how to do that and what the best strategies are. That's what we're gonna go over today. Okay, why do you need to market? You guys know why you need to market, but maybe you've forgotten, so let me just make sure you remember. There are three major reasons to market, and that's to introduce yourself to strangers, 
right? And you want to give them content, you want to give them free offers, um, and the objective or the target audience here is to get new strangers into your business, right? You want to have a consistent way to increase that awareness to people who don't know you. The reality is, is that it's not, most businesses don't fail because their idea is bad or they're in a market that's saturated and nobody wants to buy. Most businesses fail because people don't know who they are and they're not making sales. That's the reason why. So you want to make sure that you have a consistent process to always be bringing in new business. The second major reason why you want to market is to increase engagement and activity, and that's the relationship part. You want to have a process that um, allows you to engage with your audience, right? You can do that through events like having contests or challenges, having physical events where you invite people and you have meet and greets, you maybe have information sessions, travel parties, whatever you do. Email campaigns are a way to engage. There's multiple ways to engage and keep that relationship going with your customers. But the objective for you to do this relationship is with all, all of the types of customers, your strangers, your acquaintances, and your clients. I always tell you guys that your number one job is to market your business and your number one job your second uh, job is to be building relationships. You want to be building relationships with all of the different types of customers you have. You want to be building relationships with your travel suppliers. And then your third job is to sell, right? Is to do whatever your superpower is. All right, the third reason to market is to, to make sales, right? Simple put, you want to sell your products and services. So you want to be doing that through promotions, your programs, your direct offers. And again, you only want to be doing direct selling, hard selling to acquaintances and existing clients. All right. So now you've got what we're going to be doing is talking about your different problems in terms of the arc system, right? So you've got an attraction problem, a relationship problem, and a conversion problem. So how do we solve that through advertising or marketing? So the problem is here is how do you get in front of your target audience? Simple as that. How do you start the conversation? And the best way to do that is, is to find where your target audience is and introduce yourself via some sort of intro offer. So again, what I'm talking about here is, is I want you to figure out, one, who is your target audience, right? And what kind of offer would they be interested in so that you can extend it to them and you can start to build up your um, lead list via your email list or contact list. And so the way to do that is making sure that you, you identify the right customers, you've got the right offers that they're interested in, and you're doing and you're giving them the right message so that they will ultimately convert into becoming a lead. That's your attraction problem. All right, so I sort of uh, kind of went through this as how do you, um, like, what is your, I'm sorry, we're kind of skipped ahead. I'm thinking about what we're about to go over. Um, so how do we solve your relationship problem? What is the problem here? Is how do you take that lead and start to build a relationship with them, right? How do you say, I get an email address and how do I introduce Sunday to this new stranger who knows nothing about me, right? Well, the way to do that is to build a relationship building process. Are you going to do that through email campaigns? Are you going to have a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group? Are you going to have regular events that you invite your strangers to? What is your relationship building process that you're going to implement so that you can take a lead into the relationship and then ultimately start having that ongoing communication with them and then ultimately they become a and then your conversion problem right so now you've got leads you're relating to them well how do you extend offers to them right so how do you get them to become clients right what is the process that you need to do to get them to become a client so the biggest thing is your biggest asset is always going to be the number of people that know, like, and trust you. So if you have a way to ensure that you're um, always bringing in new people, you're building up that relationship through your relationship building process, that KLT factor is going to grow with them and always you're always going to have a pool of people to be pulling from. And then you want to know where they are in the, pro the buying process, right? Have you, um, if they're strangers, you don't want to be selling to them. If they're 
acquaintances and they're existing, then you want to be extending offers to them. So again, you want to extend your paid offers at the right time, because if you do that prematurely, you're going to kill the relationship. I just want you to think of when you meet somebody, you know, depending on if you're married or not married, when you met your significant other to be, right? They didn't ask for marriage right away, right? You got to know them, you went on a couple of dates, you, you know, courted each other, made sure that things were right, and then you moved to that next stage. So again, you extending an offer to a stranger that you just made, and they don't know anything about you, immediately is going to kill that uh, relationship. So again, the right time for extending your offers is very critical. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why Facebook ads. So Facebook ads simply is where the traffic is, where your customers are. You know, people will, will say, well, no, you know, Facebook's, Facebook doesn't work. You know, my, my people are not on Facebook. 2.2 billion people per month. Right, and that number is growing every single month. So even with all of the things that have been going on with Facebook in the news over the last several months and even years, the, the platform still has a huge following of people who are on there. And the great thing about Facebook is that it allows you to build relationships quickly, right? So it's no longer where you're talking, um, building that relationship over years, right, before they become, before you can become a trusted advisor, but you can quickly go from stranger to acquaintance to converted customer fairly quickly on the platform. The other thing that's really great about Facebook is, and you know, some people don't like this, but as long as Zuckerberg allows us to have access to this data, I'm going to be in love with it, which is Facebook does track behavior and allows you to tap into that behavior to find your audience. And what that means is if you're looking for women who are over the age of 30 who, you know, are, you know, uh, deltas or whatever the other sorority is who graduated from a particular college in this year, you can find them on Facebook, right? And if that's your target audience, you can find those women on Facebook, that specific. You can find people who love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? And, you know, have two children who are in elementary school. That's how finite the data is in Facebook for you to be able to find your audience. Now, the great thing again about Facebook is, is that the different tools that they have allow you to reinforce your brand um, through, from a business perspective. You also um, have a communication channel. So not only can you run your ad, but you can stay in constant communication with your audience through a variety of different tools like Facebook groups. You can um, create your business page. You can have, I mean, the groups is probably the most powerful um, tool. But what I will also tell you is Facebook also controls advertising on Instagram. So if you are on Instagram and you want to broaden your exposure, Facebook ads is the way to go there because it's also controlled by there. And for many of you um, who are Instagrammers, I am not a big Instagrammer, but not because I think the platform is not good. It's just not my preferred platform. For those who are Instagrammers, what I will tell you is, is if you have noticed over the last several months that your organic reach has decreased, and that is because it is a platform owned by Facebook, and so the same types of algorithms that are on Facebook that control organic traffic, exposure is now moving over to Instagram. So whereas Facebook is a pay-to-play platform, the triple P's, Instagram will also probably become that um, type of platform in the near future as well. So let's talk about the, the economic benefits of using Facebook, right? I already mentioned to you that the number of active users on Facebook are in the billions, and that is consistently growing month over month, year over year. Um, and the important thing to really know is, is that the reason why Facebook is so amazing at advertising for small businesses is the ability for you to identify your client. Identify your specific client 
and find them and get your message and your offers in front of them. No platform right now um, at the price point gives you that access like Facebook does right now. Google doesn't. Um, you know, LinkedIn is very similar to Facebook. So it's algorithm and the way that you can do the ideal, it still doesn't give you the same access ability. You have to, you know, be connected to somebody in order to do, uh, to reach somebody on LinkedIn, but Facebook is open ended. You pay to play and you will be able to get in front of your client. Um, the activity and behavior data capture. I mean, it's like no other. I'm, you guys can just, you know, think of a, a characteristic about your client or just some characteristic about something posted in the chat and I'll let you know if there's a way for you to um, get that, excuse me, get that information in Facebook and the chances are the answer is yes. Um, Facebook ads are relatively cheap compared to other marketing channels. So newspaper ads, magazines, radio, cable TV, you know, those are sort of, uh, don't get me wrong, I don't think that they're not viable options for you to choose as a channel, a marketing channel. It's just that they're very expensive, right? So if you're going to do any of those channels, you just want to be really super clear about, is, are those channels reaching your target audience? Are you able to track? Um, because, it, you know, newspaper is very difficult to segment out the audience of people. It's usually done by zip code. Um, you may be able to, depending on the type of newspaper, identify the demographics of the, the people, the type of people who are subscribing to the newspaper. But again, to get down to the finite type of data that Facebook is tracking um, about its users, it's not, it's just not the same compared to that. And the cost, right? Your ads getting in front of the right type of people, you can get them depending on the type of ad that you're doing, you can get them as low as a, a penny, right? You can deliver video ads um, and get them viewed in front of your ideal cost, um, your ideal customer as low as a cent per view, right? So uh, again, the comparison of the cost um, access to your, your customer, your ability to get in front of the right people with the right message is like no other platform. All right, so let's talk about, well, how do you do that, right? So what are some strategies that you need to do? So before I go into the strategies, what I will tell you is even though Facebook is the most amazing platform um, to be able to get in front of your target audience, you really need to know what you're doing in the platform to be successful. Like you cannot, I mean, you can, but you're not going to see the success that you want to see um, unless you know what you're doing in the platform. And so I see that there's a hand raised. Let me, all right, so let's get back to ad strategy. So what we're going to do is um, before I go into this, I just want to talk a little bit about, again, the different things that we're going to be doing in, in the future classes. There are three things that you really need to understand about Facebook advertising is, is you need to walk in understanding the, the, what is your goal and what do you want to accomplish with your Facebook ad. That's what we're going to talk about today. Then next week we have a class that's called ad types. We're going to talk about the, the types of ads that you need to be selecting in order to get leads or conversions um, for your ads. And then we're going to talk about targeting, right? Because I'm telling you, you can find somebody who likes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, who are, you know, who's got children, who has got a degree and makes over $150,000 a year, right? And that's all through Facebook targeting. So we're going to talk about... Um, and so the, it's either the second or the third class. I can't remember. I think targeting is next week and then the following week is ad types, but you want to know those three things, right? You want to know the strategy that you want to go after, which is what we're going to go over today. You're going to want to know how to target and what types of things you can target. And then you want to make sure you understand the ad types. So let's get started with strategies. All right. So I'm, I've segmented these strategies based on the type and where your customer is, right? So attraction ad strategy is how do you get how do you get email addresses or contact information from prospective clients? 
um, through a Facebook ad. So simply this is what the flow looks like, right? Is, is you're going to surface up your ad um, in front of people that meet your criteria, right? So are they men, women, are they both, right? Are they married, are they single, do they have children? You know, are they African American, are they not? Are they living in the United States, are they not? I mean, literally all of these different targeting um, characteristic is how you're gonna get this pool of people. That person is going to see your ad. So this is the second part right here. They're gonna click on your ad and then they're going to click on a button usually. So this is an example of my Facebook ad that I ran. I run this ad, I've done this class. This will be the, I, I think the third time we've uh, done this course. Uh, and so this ad was run and what you see here is you see the ad. Many of you actually saw the ad and that's how you're in the class. You click on the ad and then what it does, it takes you to a page for you to capture the email address and then what you do is deliver the content to the email address. So let's talk a little bit about more of what that means and what that looks like. So what, what are the benefits of that, um, th this type of strategy? Is it's easy, right? Somebody clicks, they give the email address and you deliver what it is that you want, right? Well, what kind of stuff can you do, right? And so that's what, when we talked about the different types of customers, you can deliver, you can deliver a guide. You can do a, uh, an ad that says, here's a guide on you know, best practices on, uh, let's say, your first time going to the Bahamas, right? What you need to know about going to the Bahamas, right? You could do that as an information piece and somebody will click on that, give them your email address and then you in exchange will deliver that guide to them, right? A tip sheet, right? You could have a planner, how to plan your, your first Disney vacation or uh, plan your wedding destination. That would be a great um, offer. But it's easy, right? They just click, they give the email address and you deliver, right? Um, and you can do this in volume. You can get in front of thousands of people per day, right? Not like you can in person. And these are thousands of people that meet the criteria that you get to define. You get to spend one, you get to spend one expenditure on capturing that lead. And then that lead is in your purview, so to speak. They're on your list and you get to then continue the relationship for that one expense. So it's not like you have to keep spending dollars to talk to them, you spend the dollar one time and now they're on your list and then you've got your relationship um, process for which you continue to do that nurturing. Now, the con is, is the relationship may take a little bit longer to nurture, to develop. You have to test the process, right? So it's not like you, you test the segment once and boom, you see immediate success. There is a testing process that you need to go through to make sure that the targets that you are after, that they're yielding the right information. Linda, I see that you've raised your hand again. Go ahead and put your question in comments and um, I will answer. All right, so what is the relationship ad strategy? How do you um, get, how do you, how, do, how can you relate to more people? So this is, a, this is a relationship activity, right? I am explaining to you how, um, web, uh, how, how to use Facebook ads, what the strategy is to do this, this event, which is a webinar, right? How do I invite people to an event, right? You can either have a virtual event, an in-person event, you can invite people to um, come inside of your group, and simply the process is this. Again, you're gonna target a set of people based on a criteria, you're going to create an ad that's going to invite them to your event. They're going to give you their email address and then you're gonna tell them where the event is and you're going to host it, right? So that's pretty simple. So you can do this strategy to do events that you host um, in person or virtual. You can actually run an ad to invite people to your Facebook group, get their email address and invite them to your Facebook group. That's really a great strategy too. Um, and the clicks are pretty, um, usually pretty inexpensive for that as well. All right, some of the benefits of that is, is that you're actually obtaining a micro commitment. And what that means is, is that 
just because people are not spending money, people's time is just as valuable as money. So the fact that you've, you know, you've decided to come to this webinar or people come to your event, right? You're getting some commitment from them to listen to you or to be a part of your business, right? So getting that commitment is important in developing the relationship. You get direct ability to nurture those, um, those leads also after you get the email address. So you've invited them to the event, virtual or in physical, and now you've got their email address and you can not only continue a relationship at, um, to the event time, but post the event as well. It accelerates the relationship. I will tell you, um, I've had multiple Facebook groups. Um, you know, I have the Facebook group now for our travel business. When I was doing general marketing, coaching, I had the Facebook group there. I had a Facebook ad school group. And just the group members in your group are very vested in wanting to get the information. So when you create a group, it really does accelerate the relationship great, um, greater and quicker. So if you do have um, an idea or you're in a particular travel niche, having a Facebook group or a group of some sort will help you to accelerate that relationship. It does take, so, so one of the cons is that it does take more of your time to plan and coordinate, right? It takes more of your time to plan the event, coordinate the event, have the group, uh, you know, release content to that. But again, the reward is, um, is, is great. The, the reward is definitely great for the time invested. Before I go to, um, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Okay. Um, and so one of the objectives I just want to make sure that you understand from the relationship ad strategy is, is that, again, it's the same thing for the attraction is that you just want to give and get, right? You want to give them the event, you want to give them a reason to attend, and you want to get the information. You want um, to ensure that you are not doing direct selling, so you're not selling them some expensive package or whatever you are just trying to ensure that you are giving something of value, either an event or an offer, and in exchange, you're getting that email address. So um, I think this is a duplicate page, so I apologize about that. Um, but what I wanted to make sure that I did go over is, is that with the the strategy here is, so let me just go back to this page um, just really quick so you can see the picture here, is once you get someone's email address, you can send another, you can send another ad to them as a reminder. So if you've ever experienced this, you may have, let's see, let's say you've uh, clicked on someone's ad on Facebook and then you'll get a subsequent ad that will be like, you know, as a reminder, you did whatever, right? That's called a retarget ad, where once you get them on the ad, you can then spend further ad dollars to remind them, let's say to do a purchase or remind them to attend your event or um, whatever messaging in the retargeting that you want. So I just wanna talk to, let you know is that you can do a one-time ad spend or you can do what's called retargeting where you, once they've clicked on an ad, you retarget them, or let's say they clicked on a video and you retarget them again and you give them a different, stronger message that's gonna push them further down your funnel. So that's all, that's really what this text is really talking about, is retargeting with an exchange offer is that you'll get the ad the one time, you give them the free content, and then you write another ad and you're doing a secondary offer. All right, so Let's talk about your conversion strategy one. So here, same thing. Everything is really is what are you giving? And that give is what is your offer? Sorry about that. Okay, what are you giving and what is your offer? And what are you getting in return, right? So in conversion, you're looking for a sale, right? You're looking for a sale, um, depending on if it's a dollar conversion or it could be an email conversion, right? You're looking for the lead, right? So you're looking for either the contact information, maybe an attendance to your event or a sale. Those are all conversion events. And in those conversion events, you want to have given an offer 
to somebody in exchange for that, right? So if they're, you're doing a blog or a video in exchange for them getting access to that, you want their email address. If it is they attend and they'll get to go to an event, in exchange you want their email uh, address and you want their attendance, right? If it's a sale, you want the purchase, right? So those are all called conversion events that you potentially will be going after when you do your Facebook ads. All right, I'm gonna pause because that pretty much are, that is what we've gone over today. We've gone over the fact that you've got, you know, strangers, acquaintances, and you've got BFFs. You have different types of ad strategies to address those types of customers, right? So if it's a acquaintance, I'm sorry, if it's a stranger, you want to get and give something that's low commitment so that they will give you that email address. If it's an acquaintance, you want to do something that's going to be a little bit more of a stronger commitment, maybe attending an event, either physical or virtual, um, joining your group so that you can um, nurture them inside of the group, maybe continuing doing email campaigns to them. And then if it's a conversion, what you're doing, uh, a sale, the type of ad that you would be doing is potentially a retarget of people who have already you know, who are already on your email list or have already been, um, who've already uh, watched or clicked on any of your previous ads and then you wanna sell them something or do something that's, you know, getting that purchase event from them. All right, this is what we've gone over, these key concepts. You wanna understand that there is a process. You wanna don't, you don't wanna just jump in. You don't wanna just start running Facebook ads, go to Business Manager and just start, right? You want to understand that there's a process and that you need to follow it. Like there's, there's no skipping around. There's no skipping around because what I will tell you, unfortunately, is if you start writing Facebook ads and you don't know what you're doing, Zuckerberg will take your money. He will charge you for every ad that you do, regardless if you have success or not in it. It doesn't matter if it's put together well or not. If you, you know, meet the minimum criteria of how he says to set it up, He'll take your money and you'll get no um, results. But what we really wanna make sure is that you set your ads up properly so that you get the results that you're looking for. What um, you need to understand is, is you really have to understand who your customer is because that is a critical component to doing the Facebook ad. You don't wanna just start you know, advertising and pick a, a, you know, a million people to start advertising. You're not gonna see success with your ad there. You want to make sure that you are matching your offer to where your customer is in the relationship process, right? So again, like I've mentioned multiple times, you do not want to um, start advertising your ads to uh, your, your, your packages to strangers. That is where most people see failure is they start, you know, they post on their Facebook business page or their personal page and they say, I've got this great, you know, package and it's $8.97 and it's, you know, five days and, and they don't see success. They boost the ad and they don't see success. And they're like, well, Facebook ads don't work, right? Maybe you've done a little bit of targeting, but you know, it's to strangers and they don't know who you are, right? Maybe you've boosted it on your friends and family. And maybe your friends or family, and I will tell you, are not your ideal customers, right? So skipping over the understanding of who your ideal customer is and how to find them on Facebook is a recipe for disaster. So we want to make sure that you understand that there is a process that you've got to follow. You need to know who your customer is, and you need to have the right offer to offer that customer. And you need to understand that there is a step. I have a five-step process that I've gone, that I've created to help newbies understand how to actually run the Facebook ads. All right, so today I promised you that I would show you what you need to do to get more leads. You wanna get more leads, you wanna get in front of more people, Facebook ads is the way to go, right? You have gotta do it in a methodical way. You can't just jump in, start boosting an ad, which most of you, if you have played with Facebook, that's probably what you're doing. You see that little blue boost button, which to me, it's just like, it's like a candy bar that when you're really hungry and you, you buy a candy bar and you think it's going to satisfy your um, hunger, but you're still really hungry afterward, that's what that boost button is. It's like it doesn't satisfy your hunger. It doesn't really meet your needs, 
because it's designed to do a very specific thing and most people don't understand what the boost button is for. Right. I also showed you how you can increase your sales through Facebook ads, right? If you are running the right types of ads through Facebook, you are going to see success. You're going to get leads and then you're going to nurture them and then you're going to ultimately convert them into customers. All right, before I go, we'll make sure there's no questions. Looks like you guys are good. No questions on Facebook. All right, so the problem is, is that, you know, I only got a certain amount of time. We've been on actually for about an hour almost, and there's still so much more I still have to talk to you about, right? So I've, as I mentioned, we've got ad types, we've got ad targeting. Those are two additional classes that will be ha held this month, and we're going to be talking about the different types of ad types and really focusing on the type of ad that you need to be running to see success. And then we're going to talk about ad targeting, right? So how do you like, you know, what types of targeting is available so that you can actually find out who it is that you want to actually get your offers in front of, right? I also mentioned that there's a five-step process that I have, right? Um, in order to create the ad, launch the ad, um, and then you've got to, you know, create ad copy, you've got to have imagery, you're going to do images, you're going to do video, what are you going to do, right? How do you optimize the ad so that you are getting the most amount of clicks and the most amount of conversions that you want? How do you test the ad? When do you turn it off? Like how much money should you be spending? I mean, there's so much more to Facebook advertising that obviously I can go over in just one hour uh, class. But Hopefully this, what this class has done is it allows you to see that there are strategies that you can adopt based on what objective you want to get in order to see success. Hopefully that is what you got out of today's class. And the question that I would ask you all that are on is, is what if you could do this for your travel business? You know, some of the ads that I run, Gardner, and I spend probably about anywhere depending on what kind of campaign I'm doing, like I've got a campaign where I um, am giving a travel guide. A lot of you probably have gone to that. I probably spend anywhere between three and five dollars per ad and that um, per conversion. And that gets me about 10 to 15 leads per day into my business. What could you do with 10 to 15 leads in your business, in your travel business? Right? Is that, is that more leads than you're getting today? And I'm talking about leads that have clicked on a piece of content that qualifies themselves as somebody who would be interested in the services that you provide. Would that change your business? Would that be beneficial to your business? And what if you didn't have to do anything but set the process up once and you didn't have to worry about like, you know, going out to a networking event you know, one to two of those a month, and you're consistently getting 10 to 15 people in your business, new leads in your business. What does that look like for your business? Does that help or break your business? Do you feel like that that would get you more discovery calls, ultimately more sales? How does that change the nature of your business if you're able to successfully do that? Give me some comments in the comments in terms of how you feel like that that would have impact on your business. So on the, uh, we've got a, a question that asks, should I run Facebook ads for my quiz? So uh, TT, you've got a stranger offer that is a quiz and absolutely, I think you should do that. I absolutely um, think that you should run ads to that because what that's going to do is, um, and so for those who don't know, TT is in our membership group and she's got this really amazing quiz that she's created that um, she specializes in adventure travel and she's got a quiz that she cr has created that allows people to take the quiz and the results will identify the type of traveler that they are and I think she's got four different options um, and it gives them some information about what they like or potentially need when they're selecting a travel. It's a really amazing quiz, right? It's all electronic and the type of off, so that would be the offer. She would offer the quiz and then what she would do is run a stranger ad. She would target people based on a criteria that she sets, run that ad. People will take the quiz to get the results. They'll give her their email address and all of those new leads will um, be people that she can then further nurture. She can further even segment those people based on the results of the quiz. And so her and I have talked about that as well. 
Um, and so Jazz says that if she was able to get 10 to 15 new leads in her business, that would increase her sales. TT says that would be awesome. Andrea says that that would be awesome. This would be, um, this would help her against her biggest hurdle. Um, so these are all beneficial things, right? I mean, I know for my business and for where I am in my business, right, my ability to go to networking events and meeting people like I need to is very limited. I only have a certain amount of time. I've got, you know, two businesses I'm running. I've got kids. I've got, you know, contracts that I'm working. I mean, there's a multitude of things that I'm doing, right? So I need a way to attract strangers into my business consistently. 10 to 15 leads per day is a significant impact to my business and has been over the years. So, you know, I do these workshops for a myriad of different reasons, but one of the main reasons I do them for is, is because one, I always want to make sure that I deliver workshops that are of um, interest to the people who are attending them, but that they solve a problem that I have determined based on what you guys are saying that you're struggling with. Facebook ads is a huge struggle for many small business owners. They know it's successful but they don't really understand how to do it and how to make it a success. So, you know, it's my, I hope that today's workshop did help you and that you understand that you have an option, right? You have a choice in terms of what your next steps are. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like, right? What, what do you do from here, right? You can do a couple of things. You can just take this information and you can shelve this in your mental, you know, your mental catalog of great things that you've learned on a Saturday after morning and you can keep just doing what you're doing, right? Or, you know, decide not to use Facebook ads or, you know, haphazardly use them and figure it out on your own, right? That's one of your options, right? You can learn it on your own. I've been doing Facebook ads since 2010 before all of the options and all the bells and whistles that they had before they were $2.2 billion. And I will tell you back in 2010, when I was doing Facebook ads for my um, salon, knew nothing about Facebook ads. And it was so much simpler. They didn't have as many options. And um, this is before I even took a my own class, right? Became the expert that I am today. Back in 2010, I just created this little black and white picture this black and white ad that had a little picture of a woman who had an afro and just said natural hair salon and I ran that bad boy right and I got more customers in my salon that first month than the month previous when we had like zero customers new customers coming in just by a virtue of that Facebook ad right you know fast forward some nine years later Facebook ads are significantly more complicated than they were um, nine years ago, right? And that is because he has extended the platform to, you know, million, billion dollar businesses who mark, who now expend millions of dollars on Facebook, right? So Coca-Cola, Pepsi, big brands spend big dollars on advertising on Facebook, right? So they've got to have all of these options to be able to compete as a marketing channel for these companies, right? So it's very complex now compared to the way it was some nine years ago. But you can learn it on your own. I did it, I went to, I, I learned as much as I could on my own and then I started investing in advanced classes. I still continue to um, invest in advanced classes. I spent thousands of dollars trying out and trial and error, trying to figure out how to learn targeting, trying to figure out which ad types work for me and which don't. I've taken classes that were beneficial. I've taken classes that were not beneficial. And um, you can do it on your own. So I, ever, I never want to tell anybody you can't learn it on your own. If you want to spend that time in the trial and error and if you've got the time and the money to invest in that, then that absolutely is an option for you. But you know, I, I'm always going to give you the third option, right? Which is, is that you can say yes to investing in a course that is going to streamline the process for you and get you exactly the A's and the B's and the C's of what you need to do for your particular business. And this class is going to be focused for the travel professional who wants to learn Facebook ads such that they can start to build their stranger offer funnel. 
All right, so the, the question really is, is are you ready to take action? So let me talk to you about what you can take action on. So um, this course is called No Newbie Left Behind. And I do call the person who is new to Facebook ads a newbie. Um, you're not a newbie for much time, but you are ultimately a newbie. And what we're going to be doing in this um, No Newbie Left Behind is creating a stranger offer, offer funnel for you such that you create your offer and that you are running ads to that offer such that you are creating a pipeline of new leads into your business day after day. So what does that look like? So what's in it for you? We're gonna do five modules of live training. Um, I'm gonna guide you through all of the steps required to not only create your offer, but then write the ad copy, actually launch the offer targeting in Facebook ads, what, you know, all of the different uh, clicks and options you need to do to ensure that you've set up the Facebook ad uh, correctly. Um, and even if you've done Facebook ads before in the past and you failed, this uh, course is going to address that to ensure that you see success instead of failure. All right, so what's inside of the program? So we talked about it's five weeks, there's five modules. What I will be doing is every week over the course of five weeks, I'll be coming to you live, teaching you a concept, and then we will, I'm gonna to talk to you about some bonuses that come with this, but every week there's a major concept that we'll be going over. There are, there's a live instruction class, and then there's some pre-recorded video classes that are associated with those modules. But we're going to be going in the first module, we're going to be talking about your customer and targeting, right? What does that mean? Um, if you believe that you have a travel niche, which I, I hope all of you do, um, and I think it's a, a very good idea to have a travel niche before you start um, jumping into Facebook ads, but we're really going to talk about what your customer needs are and how we target them through Facebook. In module two, we're gonna talk about how you actually create your Facebook ad and how to launch it and test it. Because we wanna make sure that you've selected all the correct options, right? You've targeted um, based on the criteria that you've selected in option one and that you've launched appropriate. Now, the worst thing that happens is you've spent all this time, you've created ad copy and you've created an image or you've done a video and um, Facebook denies your ad because they do. It, there is an approval process, right? Well, how do we get through that, right? I mean, I promise you, I, I, like I said, I've been doing Facebook ads now for about nine years and my ads still get <laughs> denied, right? Because they change with some little nuance, right? It could be some little word in your ad copy that they don't like and their algorithm is picking it up. So how do you get around that process? We talk about that in module two. Module three is, you know, you launch your ad, you know, and then you get scared. You break out into a cold sweat and then you want to stop it. You want to tweak something. You want to change something. You're like, you look at the numbers and you're like, oh crap, I'm spending like X number of dollars and that's too much. I'm going to stop, right? I walk you through that fear of, of the first release so that you don't have to worry about, um, you know, you don't have to worry about making sure Sorry about that. Um, I walk you through that fear to make sure that you actually get through that sort of cooling period that you need to let your ads go through and that you understand and interpret the results so that you can get the success and the re um, get, get the results that you want, right? So if you want to get leads, you want to convert, you want that to be at a particular price point, we talk about what do the results mean and what changes need to be made in order to see the success that you want. Or maybe we need to stop it and do some other tweaks, right? So module three is really about understanding the results and making the adjustments necessary. Module four, we'll talk about some advanced techniques um, in terms of how do you get more results for less money. And then um, we'll talk about the follow-up process. How do you close the sale? How do you move them from you know, I've got an email, like how do you get them to the next stage in your funnel? So that's what module five is gonna be about. Bonus one is in addition to the live classes that we'll be doing weekly, I am also doing um, study hall sessions with this. 
And I introduced study halls um, this year. And the concept of a study hall is, is that we have dedicated study halls. So just like in uh, college, when you can come to your professor during a particular time allocation and ask questions, get their dedicated time to help you through any issues through the lessons. Same concept here. So we'll be doing four study halls during the five week period where you can, I will be available for two hours every study hall session and you can bring your questions. We can show up on, you can show up, uh, show me your screen if you're having a problem with getting your ad launched or you just have a question, that study hall time is there. I've done this in other classes, that study hall time is really invaluable. I think the students who have participated in study halls really enjoy the ability to have that dedicated time. You can also use that time to just work on your course uh, content and then you know ask me questions live while you're there. So that we will be doing that and continuing in this course, the study hall time. So there'll be four of those sessions through the course. And then we'll also have a dedicated Facebook group. Um, I, like I've mentioned before, I've hosted this course before um, and we've done it um, and, and the students in those courses, they are still in there. So if they still have any questions, they can come inside and ask me any questions. I'll be resurrecting that group and you'll be able to come inside and get uh, feedback directly on your Facebook ad, um, your copy, your email series, anything relative to your workflow, you'll be able to come inside of that group and get that support from me. Um, in addition to the study hall and in addition to the live session. So you really are gonna get a lot of hands-on support um, during this five week period to get your Facebook ad launched. Um, and you know, again, I've done this several times. This will be the third time. This will be the first time that we do it for the travel business. We've done it opened for all types of businesses the two previous time. And what the biggest benefit that most people have said is the, the hands-on the hands-on um, help that I provide because you know you listen to someone's content you listen to the class and what happens is you know until you're actually in the, the screen trying to do it it may not click and even if it does click you still may have a question or two and so being able to have me live to help you through that has been invaluable to the students so this is the reason why I continue to do this class live as opposed to just sort of you know, releasing it and letting it be something that you get to do on your own. All right, so in summary, this is what you get. You get the five modules of live instruction. So again, it's not all pre-recorded. There are some of the classes, uh, some of the smaller classes that will be pre-recorded, but it's a live session every week with an objective for you to accomplish. There's worksheets and activities for you to do. That's worth 1500 alone. But I'm also going to give you access to the Marketing Lab, um, which is a face group, Facebook group for you to come inside, ask your questions relative to your Facebook ad, your stranger offer, um, your landing pages, all of that will be going over. And in addition to that, I'm also giving you the two hour uh, study hall sessions where you have access to me live. All that's about $5,900. I've done this class before and I'm going to tell you I have sold it at $997. No question about it, sold it and people buy it. But since this is the first time I'm doing it for the travel specific travel boss, I'm gonna give you guys an introductory offer. And that offer is at 497 or three payments of 180.54. Now, we're starting October 2nd. I think that's a Wednesday. We're gonna do uh, classes on Wednesday. Study hall will be on Saturdays. Everything will be recorded. So if you can't, for some reason, make the class um, a live class, that class will be recorded, made available inside of the Marketing Boss Academy, and you'll be able to run through the class, attend study hall if you have questions, you can ask the questions um, you know, inside of the next class, whatever, and ask them inside of the group. If you guys have attended any of my classes, you kind of understand how I run the classes. If you haven't attended, um, it really is intended to help you get through all of the content. So I do it, release the content. You have a couple of days to absorb it. We'll do a live class. And you've got a couple of days to get onto the study call, the study hall so that you can ask questions. All right, let me pause to see if there are any questions.
All right, so offer question would be is we start, gosh, I think that's in three weeks. Let's, let me look at the calendar. Open it up for any questions. Give you guys just a couple of minutes. Yeah, we start in three weeks. Yeah, three weeks from this past Wednesday. So that's when the uh, class starts. For those who are interested in Facebook ads, I don't offer this class live often. And like I said, I don't normally do it on a self-study because people do still continue to benefit from having that live availability of me. So this at this price point, it will, after this class, it will be $9.97 again. So this is the only time I will do this introductory price. So let me see if there's not any questions. If not, then I will let you guys go and have a great rest of your weekend. But let me just make sure that you guys don't have any questions. I think TT, you ask, should you have your audience be broad or small? Um, so one of the techniques that I teach you inside of the class is the right sizing of your audience inside of Facebook. So like I, 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 you can literally get, when you do targeting in Facebook, you could get an audience size of, you know, you know, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million people, right? Depending on what the criteria is that you selected. And there is a sweet spot that I'll teach you in terms of what that audience size needs to. But generally, the, the idea is to be small. Now, you don't want to be too small, right? You don't want to only have 100 people, but you do want to be small. So you want the, the more specific you can make your audience, the more your message is going to resonate with them such that they're more opt or apt to click on your ad and give you that email address because that is the goal of what we're doing. For UTT, your goal is to get people to take and get the results of that quiz, right? So we want to get as many people that meet the criteria that, that is your target audience. We want that ad to surface in front of them. Um, and we want them to click and then we want them to actually give the email ad address in exchange for taking the quiz and getting the results. All right, we make sure there's not any questions. All right, doesn't seem to be any questions. Um, the replay will be available. I will send out an email. I think you guys, I think we already have that scheduled. You'll get an email with information if you're interested in the replay play or the subsequent classes, you will automatically get an email to let you information, let you know about the information for class number two, which we will be going over. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the topic. I think we're going over Facebook ads targeting next or ad types. Either way, it'll be ad types or targeting. And then the following week, we'll be going over um, the, the other subjects. So um, both of these are going to give you a continued information about the introduction of what you need to know relative to doing that. And then the class that we have that starts October 2nd is really going to be focused about the mechanics. We're going to be diving into you guys creating your accounts, your business accounts, going in the back end of Facebook, building out those business accounts, um, and getting your ad done, defining your stranger offer, getting the, the websites and landing pages defined, um, getting the whole process so that you have a stranger offer that is hopefully bringing in, you know, 10 to 15 clients, depending on how much ad spend you want to do or more, depending on your investment. All right. With that, ladies and ladies, because I usually don't have gents, but ladies, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me to get access to this offer. It's get, it's bit.ly, get uh, no newbie left behind. So that's NLB three pays and that'll take you directly to the three payment option. If you'd like to do it in a single pay, let me know and I will let you know. Uh, for Jazz, is this inclusive of the Academy? This is not inclusive of the Academy. So those who are TAU members, um, I am deeply discounting this uh, price for everyone. So this does not, um, this is not a part of the TAU membership. <clears throat> But if you are a TAU member, what you get is you get to be able to come inside of the TAU membership and you will get that extended um, support beyond the class uh, conclusion. 
And then you know that we also have our additional group training sessions on the last Tuesday of every month and that you will also be able to bring any questions of, about this class into that um, group session too. You just get more support, you guys know, if you're a TAU member. And unfortunately, this class is a separate program from that, but you will get to get continued support inside of the TAU membership. All right, do we have any other questions? No? Well, ladies, have a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully you learned a lot about um, different Facebook ad strategies. And we'll see you next week for installment number two. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. Talk to you soon.